Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the session Harnessing the Power to Contribute to Open Source for Modern Careers by Pallavi Sharma. Pallavi is founder of Five Elements Learning and E-Learning Organization at Mosaic Woods. She has published four books on Selenium as well. Uh, we are glad that you can join us, Pallavi, today. Hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you at the Global APM Conference 2024. My name is Pallavi Sharma, and I'm the speaker for the talk, Harnessing the Power to Contribute to Open Source for Modern Careers. A brief introduction about me. Hi, I'm Pallavi. I'm a founder at Five Elements Learning. It's an organization which provides coaching and consultancies on open source tools and technologies. I'm also a founder at Mosaic Words, which is an initiative I started this year. It's a green literature publishing company. I have around a professional experience of around close to 18 years now. I'm a committer at the Selenium Project, a published author with the Asia's largest publishing company. I'm a coach and a trainer. I'm also a Google Woman Tech Maker Ambassador. Uh, this is a, a link tree URL. You can find more details to connect to me from here. And uh, if you wish, you can scan the QR code and it will take you basically to the same link. So the agenda for today's session is, we would start with discussing what actually is the world of open source? Why should we contribute to open source? How does and how can it benefit us? The question then arises, how should we actually get started with making those contributions? I have then some message from various creators and contributors to open source for you all to share with. Uh, a personal experience of my journey of how I started contributing to open source using open source uh, so that it might give you a few ideas. And uh, we will then end it up with the question and answer section. It's a sincere request uh, during the talk. If you have any questions, please feel free to type in where Samiksha has just mentioned. And I will be answering all the questions at the end of the uh, talk when we open it for Q&A. So let's start uh, an icebreaker here. So that's an open source car. It's a JNU car. Uh, it looks like a car. It functions like a car. Uh, but it is minus any gimmicks or, uh, you know, uh, or that glizzy of uh, a Tesla maybe or any other car of your choice. It has wheels, windows, it does have an engine and you can optimize it to make it as fast and as cool you want to. So that's open source for us. Open source uh, is something which gets the work done, is freely available to us. We can modify it as per our requirements. Yes, it doesn't look all that glamoury and all that, but we can get the work done. The world of open source is actually very, very vast. Uh, it has been found from the Open Source Security and Risk Analysis Report of 2024 that more than 96% of code bases contain open source components. A GitHub Octoverse report says that 97% of apps which we use on a daily basis has open source components. That's a huge number. And on, um, it basically also tells us that not everything we see meets to an eye. A lot of that is hidden. For example, uh, you might be familiar if you are in the world of test automation about a recent 2021 November Log4j vulnerability, uh, which is known as Log4Shell, uh, which impacted more than 3 billion devices. There are more than 12,000 organizations across the world which use Log4J, which is basically a logging component uh, in Java provided by Apache. And uh, uh, it's very useful. And if you have built your frameworks using Selenium Java, you might have used it. And then another uh, tool very, uh, very, very common used in various organization in various apps is called as curl uh, client url um, more than 300 companies uh, are sponsors of this open source tool and they use it so what exactly is an open source software an open source software is a development model where the source of code is made freely available for anyone to view modify and distribute which basically helps and promotes collaboration and sharing. It's generally called at OSS OS, open source software or free open source software. 
there is various organizations across the world which basically own these open source tools by own i mean they are the caretaker of these open source tools for example linux and similar to linux uh, solutions we have linux foundation apache has its own foundation there is eclipse uh, and if in case you are a user of selenium or apm or tools which are basically built around selenium they are basically uh, taken care by the software freedom conservancy which is uh, the a uh, parent body which takes care of uh, tools like selenium and other such tools whenever you are uh, working with an open source project whether you would like to use it or to create it or to contribute it you should be familiar with the different types of licensing solutions which are available with that particular tool so uh uh, with where whichever images i have taken or content if i have taken from some other source it's basically declared from where this is taken these are all good links you can explore them later so the license types are the first type is permissive which basically uh, characterizes the flexibility and most of our open source tools uh, fall under permissive licenses which are apache mit license bsd license they allow us to use the open source tool modify the source code as per our requirements we then follow the weak left where you have to make a full disclosure of the changes which are being made and it covers a narrow selection of code this is generally a general public license copy left is a more stringent approach to code sharing and the derivative works have to be distributed under the same license term that's what copy left says and if you are in creative commons zero then that basically is a public domain where all rights are uh, you know essentially removed and anyone is free to use modify and distribute the way they want to the world of open source is vast and you have open source solutions available for various tools and technologies and problem statements if we talk in from the perspective of the world of test automation primarily for web and mobile the, this is some of the tech stack which i have used and some of you may be familiar with this tech stack you might have used it in your projects or just aware because you are part of this community so tools like selenium nightwatch apm bazel docker maven junit jenkins robot framework water and many such tools are part of the open source software the question arises why should we contribute to open source and how can it benefit us an organization called as open logic which basically provides various services and expertise around open source uh, solutions did an state of open source report it, they do it yearly and uh, they had some interesting trends which i would like to share and through that talk and understand about uh, why should we contribute to open source how does it benefit us and how will it benefit our career so it has been found uh, the data which they have accumulated is anonymous again it's open to everyone to see they found out from uh, their participants which were more than 3k in number who participated in this um, survey they did that uh, open source tools are widely used by various organization from early stage startup your backdoor garage organization to tech giants like microsoft red hat google organizations with more than 5000 employees there is a significant distribution and uh, a segment a percentage segment of organizations which use these open source tools and they are everywhere <clears throat> the usage of open source tool has basically increased within a year itself significantly from 23 to 24 whereas almost 95% of the responded saying that yes they use open source tool and their organization use them it's only 5% saying that they have reduced their uh, work on open source or usage of open source tools motivated by the survey i also did a small survey uh, through my uh, linkedin through my linkedin connections to understand what exactly people around me think about open source and have they contributed to any open source project 
around 19 people participated and this is what I got from them. So yes, they do use majority, 80% of them use open source tools for their work, but only 50% have ever contributed back to an open source project. An interesting observation in here to make was that although they are part of organizations or uh, they have worked on open source project, they either are not aware or they do not have support from their business, from their company or their project to contribute to the open source or the tools which they use to get their work done. So that was something, um, an interesting point to note. Now, uh, why do people use open source? Uh, what exactly is the reason people like to go towards open source tools and technologies? The primary reason is it's there is no license cost, and that's one of the biggest reason. It significantly reduces your cost reduction of any business solution to a very, very low number compared to if you buy anything out there doing the same work. It could also be possible that you do not have a commercial tool available in that space, but that's rare. Uh, you are able to change the source code or build upon the source code as per your requirements. So you are free to manipulate the source code and the tools and underlying technology to get your work done in the way you want to with a large part taken care by the source uh, code of open source tool as well. If the open source tool has a good community and a long-term support, for example, Selenium is now 20 years uh, in the market. It's a great community long-term support. More than 2.4 million downloads of Selenium happen every single month. Um, so the downloads talk to in millions. So uh, if you have that kind of an open source project, the community support is a much better support available to you because you are then able to access uh, advice and expertise from the various experts of the industry. Open source projects generally are using themselves other open source projects to get their work done or some of the latest technologies and trends because they themselves are low on resources, people resources. So a lot of work in open source projects gets automated. Uh, which basically, if you become part of that project, it helps you to understand, realize, and then implement similar solutions to your work area. It reduces the dependency on a particular vendor. Um, and at the same time, a particular type of open source solution, because if you're familiar with the solution A, you get familiar with a lot of other solutions out there in the market. Open source tools helps build standards, uh, which are then used by all the players of the industry. For example, Selenium helped create web driver standard. Selenium is the web driver standard, which is now along with various players of the industry from browser vendors, from other automation tools uh, coming together to make the new standard web driver by die. So open source helps in that. Constant enhancement releases and patches are frequent and a good thing which gets associated with open source. It's community oriented and transparent. You might be familiar with Selenium 3. There was a very popular, uh, another plugin which used to be used called as Web Driver Manager by Guni Garcia, which then got integrated. So it was a project created by one of the community members of Selenium, which then got integrated into Selenium 4. It became part of the main project. And it became so because the community voted for it to get integrated into the main Selenium, thus improving existence of Selenium and usage of Selenium many folds. Uh, as open source technologies is much more easier to, uh, you know, acquire skills on, um, they don't, you do not have any license cost to pay to learn, to understand, to read. It becomes easier to hire and then retain employees. Your market becomes wide. There is various career advantages of contribution to open source. Some of the basic is networking. You are able to engage with the global community of experts. You are able to talk to people outside your work profile, your work area. Uh, 
you are able to have access to a much more global vision um, and industry experts, which basically helps you also understand the trend that particular area of your profession is going forward with. There is definitely visibility. If you are a contributor or a committed to an open source project, you're able to network with other people and showcase your work to other potential employers and clients. It definitely increases your employability factor. Um, for example, if you yourself is a hiring manager or someone who is filtering out resume and you have two people resumes which have similar experience in let's say tool A, B, C, but, the, but one of them is also a contributor back to the open source. It talks a lot about that kind of person, uh, their discipline, their self-motivation, uh, etc. And you might want to uh, pick that resume over the others. You are able to grow your skills manifold because you then get the inside story of how the tool and technology is working. You are able to understand from others how a particular problem can also be solved. And all that vast knowledge sharing helps you in return. The question now arises is how can we start and where can we do contributions to the open source project? A lot of open source projects which have been built over the years have big code bases. For any newbie who wants to, you know, like for today, I would want to go and contribute to Selenium, it may become daunting as to where to get started. Where is the documentation? Who will tell me how this code is working? So again, um, there, is, there, there is a lack of people who might be able to help you actively to contribute to open source. But nevertheless, a large amount of work for any open source project actually lies outside that code base. It lies in the documentation. It lies in raising correct pull requests. It lies in raising bugs. It lies in helping people answering questions in the Slack channel or Stack Overflow. If someone is stuck using our technology and you have been able to figure that exact problem out. Maybe you sharing your experience will help people. Writing the code is actually the easy part of it. The other areas uh, like documentation, website, conferences, example sharing, talks about it, teaching people about it also is a way to contribute back to open source. Again, from the same survey, these were some of the pain areas which are listed. Uh, which people find when they're using open source solution. And if you are able to help in any one of these pain areas so that the adaptability of that project becomes good at the same time, by committing to that project, contributing to that project, your own visibility, your own knowledge, your own network increases, then it's a win-win situation for everyone. Security definitely is a concern. Maintaining the versions of software, the open source software is challenging. Knowledge and support required on high technical issues is a pain point people come across. People sometimes lack the ability to self-learn and understand the concepts related to open source technology because there is no good learning resource provided by the project itself. So it is largely community driven and issues on installation, upgrades, and configuration. For example, I gave you an example how WebDriver Manager, which basically took care of all the installation of drivers and browsers, then became part of the Selenium project, and now Selenium comes with it. So that's how you can help. To start with your contribution, you need to first search the right projects projects which you might be familiar with because you have used it. And then you can go to that particular project GitHub page and we will see some of those projects. Understand how you can start with the contribution. You can reach out to the creators and contributors of that project and find out from where you can start your help with. Any small contribution is a big win for everyone using that project. 
by using it, by fixing a bug, by improving documentation, by answering question, by creating and teaching people about open source, by sharing blogs, articles on it, videos on it, you are basically contributing to open source. By participating in an event, whether it is an attendee, as a speaker, a volunteer, or a reviewer, you are helping an open source project. For example, the reason we all are sitting here is because of an open source project, which is APM. So you all become part of contributing back to that open source project by using it, by participating in it. And then there is definitely monetary contributions, which you or your organizations can do, and every penny counts there. Generally, when you start with contribution to open source, more or less, this is how the profile would look like. You first of all have become a user to that open source project. That's how you must have come to know about it. A user who is just using it or is just aware about it. You then become a contributor by trying to find out ways to contribute to the project actively. Like you have found out a bug and you are able to report that bug, fix a bug, answer a question, and then become an active developer in that project. Which if you are consistent in that project, you reach the level of committer and further to become a technical leader or a project leader. And any open source project benefits by more people contributing to it more people actively using it, uh, voicing their opinions and eventually leading the project because it's not possible that someone who started the open source project is the leader and remains the leader across the life cycle of that project. For example, Jason Huggins did start Selenium. The bandwagon was passed on to Simon Stewart and now there are a group of people who govern and lead the Selenium project with very active set of contributors and committers. We now in here have a look at two or three open source projects and see where and how we can start with their contribution and how these projects look like in a GitHub. So I'm going to first open with the one I use and I'm most familiar with, which is Selenium. So this is the Selenium GitHub repository. I have recently done a talk in which I have showcased how if you are interested in contributing to a Selenium project, you can start through the documentation. So um, I can share the link of that talk if it interests you and you would like to know. So for any project, you can find out about the health of the project by understanding and seeing how active that project is, for example, Selenium has around 30.2k stars, around 8k folks. That's a great number. If you scroll down, there is a README which is associated with the project and the license. We spoke about license uh, in the first few slides. So the license basically tells us what type of project it is, what are the terms and condition the project is following. This will also be important for you to know if you wish to contribute to that project so that you become aware that your contribution will also fall under Apache 2.0 license and what does it mean. So going through the license agreements of any open source project is great. Then there is security policy. Generally, any open source project will have a document called as contributing. So let's have a look at it. So this document, which says contributing to Selenium, lists out the various ways through which you can contribute. You can contribute by creating bug reports, raising a feature request. There is something you would like Selenium to have and a good feature request always is a great contribution. You can help by improving the Selenium documentation. Your one code uh, sample uh, which improves the Selenium documentation impacts a very large number of people who are using Selenium because it becomes easy for them to find out how they can or how Selenium does a particular thing from the Selenium main web website itself. And that was the reason which got me started by helping with the Selenium documentation. 
it, it is then generally followed by how you can start the contribution. What are the steps you should follow, which are quite clearly listed. Just following these steps will help you get started with the contribution to this project. The Selenium project also welcomes contributors who can help translate the Selenium documentation to the different languages uh, the Selenium website supports, like Chinese, Japanese, etc. So this is about Selenium. We can have a look at another open source tool. Let's have a look at WebDriver IO. WebDriver IO is effectively um, Node.js automation test framework, which is built over WebDriver. WebDriver, the standard, effectively built over Selenium. It has got a different license term, but again, it's a permissive license. It follows MIT license. It's a good idea to have a look at it, what this license says, if you would want to contribute to this project. Again, you can see the health of the project by the stars, the folk, the active number of contributors. There is a security policy, a code of conduct, and somewhere here should again be the contributing documentation which basically helps you understand what type of contribution the project is welcoming and how you can get started. So it says us, uh, you can find a way to contribute. Uh, the support and the channel is available on metric, metrics. Selenium is Slack, Nightwatch is Discord. So they all use different types of platforms to communicate with each other. You can contribute to the code, you can improve documentation. If I'm not wrong, I think WebDriver IO documentation is also available in one of the Indian regional languages. So somebody uh, came forward and did that. You can translate the project to different languages. You can help people answer questions on the Discord channel. You can spread information about create educational content, and you can also monetarily contribute to the project. So these are the various ways which, again, WebDriver IO, an open source project, welcomes contribution. In the same way, you can explore these projects or you can choose the project you are passionate about, you found intriguing or interesting to start your contributions to. And while we are uh, at the thought of contribution, a small request from me to all of you is to plant a tree. We are all well aware of the havocs uh, every day we see uh, because of environmental factors. And one of the best ways to uh, slow it down is by planting a tree. We have one earth. So yeah, that's a small request to you all. I would like to now share messages by some of the people who are doing open source. They are the creators and contributors. Uh, it was again a small questionnaire which I prepared and shared. And I'm extremely grateful to the people who took out time from their busy schedules and sent out a message to us all today. So um, there are some of the people who are active contributors to open source and what are what do they have to tell us? So Shri Harsha, he basically says that contributing to open source helped him understand the internals of how Selenium is working, WebDriver IO is working, and which opened multiple opportunities for his own career growth. For each of these people, their LinkedIn profiles are added here. You can um, explore them to see how their career trajectory looked like. Diego uh, Molina, uh, who was the project leader and the technical leadership uh, of Selenium. Sri Harsha is also technical leader in Selenium. He says that it's, he realized it's a great way to build public portfolio, which helps showcases their, your expertise. Ronald says, who is the creator of HTML unit, uh, one of the projects under the Selenium. He says that he has learned a lot about collaborative work with people working from different parts of the world, their backgrounds and their goals, which look significantly different from his daily work projects. So you get an exposure of a, by communicating to a lot of other type of people who are not in your day-to-day -day job. 
Kailash Patak. He is uh, one of the LinkedIn top voices. And he uh, is a contribution to open source. He mentions that he has found that it increases his network, his skills, and definitely has helped him with his visibility. Pooja Jagani, um, a team lead at Browser Stack, a company which has an open source office like Microsoft, like Source Labs, like Lambda Test, and similar other organizations like Google, like uh, various other uh, organizations. So Pooja says that it has basically sharpened her skills as a developer because you are building and working on a standard. She is one of the uh, core team members working on the WebDriver BiDi standard. Um, and it also has opened doors uh, for her for various conferences, webinars, and community engagement. Luke says that he's a contributor to the and team lead at the Ruby Cucumber project. And he sees that he got various opportunities just because is the owns the side prism tool. We have some thoughts from the <clears throat> more experienced leaders who also work in open source projects. What do they say? What uh, what is the message from them to us if we want to get started with contributing to open source? So Simon says that you scratch what it is. You basically fix a problem which you want should be fixed. And most of the OSS projects are welcoming places and it's a great way to contribute. Using and talking is also a contribution is what Mara says. Helping people in the community is recognized as a contribution. Robin says that folks should not be intimidated by, I don't know whether I should be able to contribute. I don't know what others will think about me. Instead of doing all that mulling over this, jump into the project you would like to contribute, make better, which in turn we have discussed in the previous slides, how does it helps us in our career. Rahul Verma says that exchanging ideas and contributing to open source helps develop your own intellectual property. Um, he uh, has famously created Arjuna, which is a test framework around Selenium Python. And he is right now working on various open source solutions, building across you know, on uh, chat GPT and open AI tools. Admin love uh, contributors to Selenium Python bindings from the robot framework tells that when you contribute and when you do that, and if you're an active contributor, it helps build the next generation of leaders and contributors for that project which is required for any healthy open source project to function. David Burns, who is head at the Browser Working Tools and Committee and head of open source at Browser Stack, um, he says that, why don't you go ahead and speak to your managers and find whether they can help you find time and support your uh, interest to contribute to the open source and it then becomes part of your job. And by contributing to it, by helping fix the issues you think the project has, you are also helping your own organization in return because it is using it. So these are some of the messages from the creators and contributors. We then always come back to the question of why should we do something? Well, don't do it if you don't feel like, if it is not your calling, then uh, don't do it. But the why of should you should do something should be your own why. So that sometimes when it becomes tedious, you don't feel motivated, you should be able to answer your own why and come back to it. It is true for any task uh, which you want to start in your life. What is your why? Are you contributing it for visibility? Are you contributing it for networking, for knowledge? Are you doing it for fame? So if you know your why, or if you're doing it for all of it, or maybe you, you don't know right now why you're doing it, whatever it is, you should be convinced of why you want to do it. In open source projects, there is no spoon feeding. There is nobody who is going to come and uh, talk, uh, you know, uh, tell you that this is something which needs to get fixed and this is how you can do it. You have to learn uh, to find your way around communicate to people, talk to people, request for their help. And once you sail through, you impact a lot of people, including your own self. Hi, Pallavi. Uh, just a reminder, we have 
like nine minutes left for the session. Sure. Uh, yeah. I'll just uh, speak for another two, three minutes and then we can move on to Q&A. Sure. So my personal experience in open source, a lot, uh, I have basically summarized in one of the posts I did, sharing it here. My experience started as a user in 2005. We started open source because we were part of a research team in Virginia Tech and uh, like any educational institute and research projects, there is always dearth of grants. So open source came to our help and we were actively using open source project. In 2007, my first job I got hired because I knew how to use some open source tools. I then uh, got part of uh, you know, the internal uh, center of excellence team, which were able to build solutions around open source software. I started coaching people. My talk got selected in different conferences. I got signed in 2018 uh, to author books on Selenium by Asia leading technical publisher. I participated as a jury for a hackathon in a conference. Um, and since then I've been part of various conferences um, national, global, um, on various uh, levels. I then in 2021 decided to actively uh, contribute to Selenium documentation because I found that it needed uh, improvement. And I uh, find I found that I wanted that whenever someone is trying to search something on Selenium, Selenium website should be the first link and it should be able to help them. That was my motivation. In 2023, I got recognized as a committer to Selenium documentation, and I am one of all these big names here. So with that, uh, we are open to question and answers. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And there is one question in the Q&A. Uh, it, it is by anonymous attendee. Most MNCs don't allow contributing to open source even in your free time. I would want to know your views. That's uh, the question. Okay. Maybe you can uh, show them what I showed in the first slide uh, so that they realize that they are actually using open source tools. And, uh, you know, if something goes wrong there, it also impacts their own business. So if you can make a case study around it, the kind of so open source tools you are using in your project, and uh, the amount of time you need to contribute back to them. So that may become an important discussion point. And through that, you can maybe motivate your organization, your manager to help you contribute to open source. Uh, yeah, that was the only question. Anybody else, if you have any question, you can you know, write in the Q&A section. Uh, otherwise, I believe uh, we are you know, there's no other, no more questions for that. Oh, there's one on... more question. Okay. Oh, yeah. Your thoughts on AI and open source? It's by Gunasadeen uh, Ramadan. Okay. Uh, I'm not extremely familiar with a lot of open source tools in AI, but uh, I am very much familiar that, yes, a uh, um, lot of uh, open AI solutions have made their uh, projects open source. And again, the benefit they bring to the table by allowing country, community to contribute is they help build standard. And when you help make a standard, it helps a large sect of audience. For example, Selenium is a standard, which, uh, which is web driver is a standard. It has to be followed by anyone trying to automate the web. And the browsers which we use have to follow that standard. So in AI also, open source uh, AI tools are very much there. And the reason they have become open sources, they would want community collaborations and it will eventually help us make a standard which everyone can feel comfortable around and use. Thanks, Pillavi. Thanks a lot. Uh, do you have any uh, more things to share? No, I would just like to thank you. Thank you, Samiksha. Thank you, APM Conference. Thank you, everyone listening to me today. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, that's all. Have a good day, everyone. And I hope some of you find a way to contribute back to open source. Thank you. Thanks a lot for sharing your thoughts. And it was a great knowledge to know how we can morely, you know, just not by code, but different other means we can contribute to the open source. Sure. It was very enlightening.